Hey, I'm Derek Gates, a former drug boss that died and was brought back by Jesus himself. Now I travel the world preaching the gospel, equipping the saints, writing books, and making movies. You have a unique opportunity to hear revelation from a cutting edge perspective as you listen to my podcast, Unleashed. What is up, everyone? So glad you tuned in today. We're going to be talking about an awesome subject, something that's close to my heart. We're going to be talking about raising the dead. And what if I told you that if you were inspired enough today just to choose to take the red pill, that you would gain knowledge today that you could become a history maker, you could become an atmosphere changer, and you could become a dead raiser. I'm going to tell you all about it when we come back. We'd like to thank you for tuning in to Unleash with your host, Derek Gates. If you'd like to see the video version of this episode, please visit DerekGates.com where you can give, buy merchandise, check out his YouTube channel, and see Derek's upcoming events. We encourage everyone to visit the website to find out more about your host, hear his testimony, as well as hear the passions of his heart for God. Learn how to become a monthly partner of $50 or more, and you can gain access to his red carpet events, get exclusive teachings, and a free digital download of his movie, From Death. Remember, brothers and sisters, that address is DerekGates.com, D-E-R-R-I-C-K, Gates.com. Mm, you want that movie. I'm telling you, if you haven't watched that movie, you're missing out. And I'm not just saying it because, uh, because it's the movie that I wrote and directed. <clears throat> uh, I'm saying it because there is a wealth of knowledge in that movie. Over, over a thousand hours I interviewed people for that movie. I may know more about the subject of raising the dead than anybody walking the earth today. Only because I had to listen to a thousand hours of people talking about raising the dead. But some of the most amazing people in Christianity, James Gall gave, gave a three hour interview. Obviously he's in the movie for about 10 minutes, but three hours, just James Gall, Ryan Lestrange, Jennifer LeClaire, David Herzog, Jeff Jansen, just uh, Kat Kerr, all these amazing people talking about the subject of raising the dead. And, um, it, it, it's just a mind blowing movie. You want it. Um, listen, guys. If if you don't know, uh, I am back to taking uh, back to taking invitations to speak. Uh, you know, our schedule got completely canceled because of COVID. Now churches are back open. If you're listening to this and you want us to come to a conference, uh, services, uh, whatever it is that you need, we are here for you. Just email us through the website, and we are looking for those sponsors. You know, we came out here to California February 16th on a mission from God. And um, that was to change Hollywood into Hollywood, and we have a whole lot on the on the plate for that with media and entertainment, and um, things got shut down because of COVID. But but God is still God, and uh, now we're ready to get into a place we're basically going to house everything in our ministry um, in one place. We're going to live, we're going to plant the church, we're going to have the studio all in one place. LA is expensive in case you didn't know it is very expensive. Um, $3,500 a month is what it's going to cost us to live. And that's probably actually not, not that's just for rent and maybe not even enough. Um, and that's not a, that's not a super nice place. That's like, I don't know what, what do you call it? Just the middle, middle income place. It's, that's not, you know, that's not a rich person's house for sure. Um, LA is expensive. So if you want to be part of that, we need you. You can be a part of changing Hollywood into Hollywood. Now, listen, I'm here to tell you right now that raising the dead is for you. Why do I know that? Because there's nothing special about me and I have raised the dead four times and that I'm just getting started. This party is just getting started as far as I'm concerned. I would love to raise thousands of people from the dead by the time I check out of this place and move on to heaven. And I'm telling you right now, if you don't want to raise the dead, there's something wrong with you. If you are not so on fire for God that you don't want to run out into the streets and pray for everything that, that that's moving and especially pray for anything that's not, you're not on fire. Your wood is wet. 
You need to be ignited. You need to get God in you. You need to get that fuego, that super caliente fire into you to where you're so on fire for God that you can't stop me from kicking in the door to the morgue to pray for somebody. That's the kind of fire that we need to see. Not, gosh, guys, come on. It shouldn't just be a handful of people that want to be dead raisers. You all should want to be atmosphere changers, dead raisers, history makers, giant slayers. That is for everyone. That'll preach. As I take a drink from my flamingo cup, I want you to know something. If your church or your ministry is not encouraging you to do the impossible, you may be in the wrong place. Wow. Yeah, I said that. I'm not a people pleaser. That's not who I am. That's, that's not who God has made me. I'm telling you right now that if you are not in a place that encourages you to go to the next level all the time, you're in the wrong place. Wherever you're at should be encouraging you to come up to a higher level. I, I used to say all the time, and I, and I mean it, I still say it, that I want my spiritual children and, and even my children, I want my ceiling to be their floor. I would love that when I check out that my final place is the place where my spiritual kids and my kids stand to reach up further than I ever could. But the wild thing is, is the nature of the progression of the kingdom of God does not allow for that because as I pull people up to my level, I go up another level. We can never get settled into a place where we're not progressing in the kingdom of God and into the revelation of God. And if you think you got it all, then you, you, you're, you, that's, you're the one who needs this message today. If you think that you can't get any higher on God, Getting high on the most high. <laughs> if you think you can't go to another place that you think you the you the fullness of God, that you have the, the fullness of God, and so you can't receive anymore, then you miss it. The fullness of God is an understanding that he has everything for you. But I'm telling you right now, if this is all God has for me, I'm pretty let down. If this is it, I'm pretty let down. How, how many people listening to this or watching this on YouTube or charisma or wherever you're watching from have you ever thought there has to be more than this i know i have there has to be more than this there is more than this don't settle you are a dead raiser so i want to tell you man i think that one of the reasons that things like raising the dead casting out demons the reason it's so taboo in the church is because we have put it into kind of a box called myth or fantasy and most of the church believes oh yeah you know I, I when i was in the when i was in the baptist church um i used to i was a baptist for i was a baptist church planter and when i was there people would be like yeah you know we, we believe that god did this stuff but he doesn't do it now wait a second i thought god was the same yesterday today and forever what happened, to, what happened to that word? What happened to that scripture? And so what they do is they take things like raising the dead, resurrection, or, or casting on demons, and they put it into this box called myth or tradition or, or um, history. But it's not history. It's also your present and your future. And I, I don't want to live in a society where I can't cast the devil out. Because if I can't cast a devil out, that means I have to live with it. And I ain't going to live with that devil. I jumped out of that box a long time ago. Can I get an amen? <laughs> I want to petition, petition you today to do away with your theological traditions and jump into the boat with me. Go out into the middle of the water and let's step out on the lake together into a place called the supernatural. That is who God is has called you to be, that is who you are. Matthew 10, 7 says, And as you go preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons, and freely you have received, freely you give. 
Come on, people. You want heaven now? All these supernatural, super spiritual hippie kids, all all preaching, you know, saying this, heaven on earth, bring heaven down, all this kind of stuff, but you're not doing this stuff? It literally says, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Do this. So if you truly want to live in heaven on earth, if you really want heaven to invade earth in Los Angeles as it is in heaven, in Kansas City as it is in heaven, in Orlando as it is in heaven, in Dallas as it is in heaven, in Chicago as it is in heaven, in Seattle as it is in heaven. If you really want that, then you have to do this. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have been given this power and this authority to not keep it to yourself but give it away. You want more? Everybody says, I want more. They have songs about, I want more. Give me more. Give me more. But you won't even pour yourself out. You can't take more because you won't empty yourself out. That's why so many people think they already have it all. Because they've taken, they're like a sponge. They're like a spiritual leech. You're like a spiritual vampire. You suck up all the anointing in the room and you keep it for yourself. You don't give any of it away. See, clearly Jesus didn't just suggest raising the dead was a good idea. He said, do this. I don't know about you, but as a parent, when I tell my kids to clean their room, it's not a suggestion. Clean your room if you want to. No, that doesn't work for me. When Jesus said, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons, this was not a suggestion to his children. It was an order. I'll be right back. This message was brought to you today by the movie From Death, a documentary directed by Derek Gates and produced by Derek and Nina Gates. The movie From Death is about raising the dead and features some of the biggest names in Christianity today, like Jennifer LeClaire, Ryan Lestrange, James Gall, Jeff Jansen, David Herzog, Kat Kerr, Mel Tari, Robert Slairdon, and many, many more. If you would like a copy of this amazing movie, visit DerekGates.com. Remember, that's DerekGates.com. D-E-R-R-I-C-K Gates.com. You better get that movie. Just telling you. It's a great movie. <sighs> well, I'm going to share with you the first time I raised the dead and people that have been to my meetings across the United States maybe or maybe not have heard this. I don't talk about it all the time anymore, but um, I was at a buffet eating one day with my wife and somebody came in in the door and my goodness, uh, I, I would get this kind of this ping in my spirit. I don't know if, if you watching this or listening to this, get this. It's like uh, when, when God wants you to pray for somebody or maybe you have a prophetic word for somebody or some, God's going to do something with somebody, I get this ping in my spirit. And God did it with this with this guy. And they end up out of the whole restaurant. There's 300 people in the room in this restaurant. And he sits right next to us. Of course, he sits right next to us. That's how God works. I already knew. And um, as we're getting ready to eat, all of a sudden, this guy just falls flat on it, right into his mashed potatoes. My God, this guy, He, I mean, he died. He died. So I, I have first responders experience in my life doing different things. And, um, my wife was actually, uh, basically a doctor at one point before she gave it all up for this. But so I laid him down on the ground, my wife and another, another person that had a medical background that was there. They're giving this guy CPR, no pulse. He's dead. He's gone. It, it just keeps going. And, and God's whispering to me, pray for him. I said, no, no, I'm not going to do that. I don't know about you, but it's, it's, you know, it's weird to tell God, no, but I was scared. I was scared of everybody looking at me. I was scared. What, what would they think? What if it, what if this doesn't work? I, I've never done this. What, I mean, all the whole gamut went through my mind. He said, pray for him. I said, no. For some reason, sometimes God sounds like Christopher Walken to me. Pray for him. I said, no. 
And he, he continues and he gets louder. Pray for him. No. And then God does the just the worst thing ever that God could do is he snitched on he snitched on me to my wife. And all of a sudden my wife shot me the uh the side eye, the stink eye, and I immediately knew that now my wife and God were ganging up on me. And so out of this moment of desperation to get God to stop yelling at me, I just reached down and breathe in the name of Jesus. And the guy, he came back. It scared me. It scared me. I don't know if it scared me because it worked. I don't know if it scared me because, it, I mean, it just, it was scary. I thought somebody was going to have to raise me from the dead after that. So anyway, so the guy lives and, you know, we went on about our business. But the, th the thing was, is what was interesting was I I found something out that day. Number one, I, number one thing I found out was that I had a fear of man. And number two, I found out that if God told me to do something, he was going to back me up. So about six months, maybe a year later, I, I can't remember for sure now, but I'm, I'm driving. I get this phone call um, from a person that this lady actually used to sell drugs to her. Uh, when I was a drug dealer, if you haven't listened to that podcast where I talk about my life of crime, I think that was number one, or uh, actually I think it's episode one. You can go listen to that, but she knew that I was a minister. I, I'm 21 years clean, by the way, in case for, I can, I can literally feel the judgmental eyes and ears upon me right now. 21 years clean. But she calls me up. She says, Hey, you know, my nephew got hit by a truck a week ago and, um, he's only been his body has been kept alive by machines. Uh, he's, he's dead. His organs are dead. His brain's been dead. No activity in a week. They're going to unplug him. Can you come up and pray for the family? Sure. I can. On the way there, God speaks to me. He says, I don't want you to pray for the family. I want you to pray for the boy. Okay. I didn't even question whether God was going to do it or not because he said he was going to do it. So I get there, I go up the stairs uh, or the, the elevator. I get there. And, um, the family's there. She, she, she comes over and said, Hey, the family's over here. I said, I don't want to pray for him. She looks at me all confused. I said, I want to pray for the boy. She says, you can't. She says, they won't let anybody back there. Nobody's been back to ICU in days now. They're getting ready to unplug him now. I said, look, I, I'm going to pray for him. She said, she goes, literally you can't, they won't let anybody in. He's behind the locked door ICU. You can't even get back there. I simply said one thing to her. You don't understand the anointing. So I walked over and I had zero doubt that I was going to be able to go back there. And I pulled the locked door open. Everybody looked shocked. The grandma said, well, if you're going, I'm going. She came after me. We walked right past two sets of security, maybe even three. But I know two for sure. It was I, I literally felt like the apostles walking out of the prison, like the prison guards had fallen asleep. They didn't even notice us. I get back there to the nurse's station. I said, I need to pray for this boy. I need to pray for him now. Where's he at? And she said, well, he's right there. And I turned around. He's in that room. They were already, they're in there unplugging him. They're taking hoses out of him, all this different stuff. So I go in there and I just speak life into him. I didn't have a system. I didn't have a program. I didn't have a, a recited prayer. I, there was no ritual I did. All I did was speak life. And it couldn't have been any more than 15 or 20 seconds. And he's climbing out of the bed. A miracle, a sign, and a wonder right before everybody's eyes as he crawled out of the bed. And he looked at his grandmother. The nurses are dumbfounded. They're, they're running down the hall and he looks at his grandmother and he says one thing. Can you guess what it was? I'm waiting. Go ahead and say it out loud in your car. Go ahead and say it. No, you're all wrong. I know some of you said, I've seen Jesus. I know some of you said, I'm hungry. I've, I've heard it all. Nobody ever guesses it. He says, why am I wearing a diaper? I think he was 15. It may, he may have been 16. I, he may have been 14. I can't remember for sure, but he's like 14, 15, 16, something like that. You don't put a diaper on those kids. They're wearing a diaper because when you, when you uh, end your life, when they unplug you, your body releases all your internal 
fluids. Today, that boy is married, has kids. It's an amazing testimony of God's goodness, his love for us, and that it is never over. A doctor and man does not have the final say. I don't care what they're saying about your cancer. I don't care what they're saying about your heart. I don't care what they're saying about your brain. I don't care what they're saying about your memory. God has the final say upon your life. You can choose to speak life or you can choose to speak death. And that is literally the power that God gives you to raise the dead is you rebuke the spirit of death and speak life. That's it. Now, I believe today is, I wrap this up for you. We're not even tapping in to an eighth of the power that we have of the kingdom of God. The throne room of God is pouring out upon our lives as sons and daughters of God. We're not even tapping into an eighth of that power. And the fact that it only takes you saying, give me more God so I can pour it out on mankind, that scares the hell out of the devil. The fact that the sons of thunder are being called to the front lines of Christianity. The fact that God wants to make you a dead razor and a giant slayer, that God is calling up frontline soldiers, wild ones that aren't afraid to operate in signs, miracles, wonders in the fullness of, man, that scares, that scares the devil. I'm going to get into the rest of it in just one second. This message is brought to you by the book, From Death to Destiny, The Devil Tried to Kill Me, a book written by Derek Gates about his transformation from a drug lord, weapons smuggler, and sex trafficker to a movie maker, speaker, and son of God. To get your copy, visit DerekGates.com. That's D-E-R-R-I-C-K Gates.com. Please be advised there is a parental warning for this book due to some of its graphic content. So it scares the hell out of the devil that all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is ask. But in order to ask and mean it, you have to get rid of a couple of things. You have to get rid of the fear of man. See, the fear of man will put a root in you that dictates your direction. And the only thing that should dictate your direction is the thirst and your hunger for God. You also have to get rid of the fear of failing. Look, I don't care if I pray for a thousand people and nobody gets raised from the dead. What if that 1,001, what if that one is raised from the dead? That makes all the thousand worth the practice. See, I don't care. See, we have seen thousands of people healed in our ministries. I mean, I don't even know how many, I mean, we could have one ministry trip and have thousands of people healed on, on one ministry trip. I can't even tell you how many thousands upon thousands of people we've seen healed, demons cast out, people raised from the dead, cancer shriveled up and die, hearts healed, emotional wounds healed. I can't even tell you. But if you have the fear of failing, you won't even pray for one person. I, I think it was I think it was Oral Roberts that said he prayed for thousands of people before he ever seen one healing. It might have been A. A. Allen, maybe both of them. I can tell you this: I, I know I prayed for hundreds of people before I saw my first healing. I don't regret the hundred people that didn't get healed. And every time we go on a ministry trip, thousands of people get healed. But guess what? There's many people that don't. Does that make it? Does that make it worth it still? It sure does. It's up to God to do the healing. I can't, I, it's not my problem if somebody doesn't get healed, but I'm not going to let it stop me from seeing God move. I just won't. I'm just not going to let it happen. Wow. God does not give you a spirit of fear. So quit succumbing to the fear of man and the fear of failing. If you ask him for bread, will he give you a stone? If you ask him for a fish, will he give you a snake? Some, some translations say a serpent. Matthew 7, 
verses 9 through 10. If you ask him for a greater anointing upon your life to do these things, he will give it to you. But let me tell you something. You better, you better know what you're asking for. Because he doesn't give it to you to, for you to set it on a shelf somewhere and to get dusty, musty, and crusty. He gives it to you so you can be oily with the presence and the anointing and the fire of God. Look, man, I don't know about you, but if this doesn't get you fired up with the red hot fire of God, the, the caliente, mucho caliente fuego of God, then something's wrong. Guys, God wants to use you in a greater power today. He wants you to be used to raise a dead, to cast out devils, to cleanse the leper, to heal the sick. He wants you to do it. Everywhere around you is dead people. See, it's not just physically dead. It's also the spiritually dead, the mentally dead, the emotionally dead. And those are all people that you can be raising from the dead every single day. I would say that's even more important. If you can't, if you can't lead somebody to Jesus and raise them from the spiritually dead, then there's a problem. There's a problem. If you can't, if you can't use what God has given you for the simplistic power of the gospel of Jesus Christ to lead people to Jesus, then there's a problem. Then you don't even need to be going for the greater things. Because I think, I think salvation is the greatest thing. The greatest resurrection in the Bible was Jesus. Because without that, we would have none of this power. Guys, I'm going to leave you with that. But I love you. I love you. Remember, if, if, um, if you want us to come to your ministry, uh, just contact us through the website, DerekGates.com. Remember, we are looking for partners. Listen, we have, we have a TV show we're trying to launch out of Los Angeles. Uh, we have so much that we're doing. It is expensive out here, but God has brought us here. Now, I want you to know, you're not my provider. God is my provider. But he may want to use you today to provide for his kingdom. So any gift helps. Any gift helps. Maybe you can give five, $5, $10, $25, and some people can give thousands. And let me tell you something. Those thousands make a big difference in what we're doing in Los Angeles. I love you guys so much. You guys are absolutely amazing. I hope to hear from you soon. Freedom! 